Africa wide, Africa split on Russia's Human Rights Commission suspension. The UN General Assembly has voted to suspend Russia from its Human Rights Council, HRC, following allegations of war crimes by Kremlin troops in Ukraine, but African diplomats did not widely back the move. Compared to the vote on the resolution to condemn the invasion that was held in Alimach, more African countries abstained and voted against the decision this time. Out of 54 nations on the continent, 24 abstained and 9 voted against the move, including Algeria and Ethiopia, which have both had historically good relations with Moscow. Zimbabwe, Burundi, Eritrea, Congo, Mali and the Central African Republic voted against two. Another 11 had no votes recorded, Rwanda, Zambia and Somalia included. Only 10 African countries backed the suspension of Russia from the 47-member HRC. These were Chad, Comoros, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ivory Coast, Libya, Malawi and Seychelles. Guinea. Guinea gives stern warning to foreign mining firms over inequality. The head of Guinea's ruling military government, Colonel Mamadi Dumboya, has told foreign mining companies to build processing factories locally and to share revenues with the country equally. Dumboya has given the companies until the end of May to submit proposals and a timetable for the construction of bauxite refineries, according to a video posted on the presidency's Facebook page. With an estimated 7.4 billion tons, Guinea has the world's largest reserves of bauxite, a mineral used in the manufacture of aluminium essential for the automobile and food industries. It is also the second largest producer. China imports about half of its bauxite needs from Guinea. However, the benefits of the mining of bauxite or other abundant natural resources such as iron, gold and diamond remain notoriously uneven. Experts cite insufficient investment in the development of the local economy, a lack of the essential infrastructures such as roads, endemic corruption and loopholes in existing laws. South Africa South Africa appeals to the UN against bias and partisanship. South Africa's International Relations Minister Naledi Pandor has berated the United Nations, stating that its member states must not be allowed to deploy it in a partisan manner when briefing the media on South Africa's position on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The minister added that suspending Russia from the UN Human Rights Council would make it harder to hold the country accountable. Pandor said that the body must stand for human rights equally in all countries, including Palestine, where scores of children have been killed in its conflict with Israel. South Africa again abstained from a crucial United Nations vote to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. It is the third time it abstained from UN votes on the ongoing conflict. The country has come under criticism for its non-aligned position in the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But Minister Pandor said that the UN should be consistent and stand for human rights for all, not only in this situation. She said that suspending Russia could lead to even more conflict. Rwanda Rwanda becomes the first African country to launch a center dedicated to artificial intelligence. Rwanda has become the first African country to launch a center dedicated to artificial intelligence. Rwanda has launched its C4IR saying it will work with stakeholders around the world to design and pilot new approaches to technology governance that foster innovation in an inclusive and responsible manner. According to Rwandan Minister of Information, the advent of the Fourth Industrial Revolution and the rapid innovations witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic has increased urgency to develop digital and technological capacities to build more resilient systems for a healthier society and more sustainable economy. Some of the projects that the C4IR is already working on are the country's artificial intelligence AI policy and laws on the protection of personal data and privacy. 
At the launch of the center last week, President Paul Kagame said the facility was the country's pride. He added that it was evidence of how far it has advanced in the field of science and technology. Western Sahara Western Sahara's Polisario Front suspends contact with Spain. The Polisario Front independence movement has accused Spain of making a grave error after it changed its position and backed Morocco's autonomy plan for the disputed Western Sahara. Morocco sees the Western Sahara as a former Spanish colony with rich phosphate resources and access to lucrative Atlantic fishing waters as an integral part of its territory. The Algeria-backed Polisario separatists took up arms in 1970s and have continued to demand an independence referendum on the basis of a 1991 deal that included a ceasefire. Spanish Foreign Minister José Manuel Álvarez said Morocco's 2007 proposal to offer Western Sahara autonomy was the most serious, realistic and credible basis to end the decades-long dispute over the vast territory. This sparked an angry response from the Polisario, which expressed surprise over the move. Congo Country holds a showcase of culture in Fast Brazza Fashion Week. The first edition of Brazza Fashion Week, BFW, took place in Brazzaville, the Republic of Congo's capital. Held for three days, the week showcased talents from the Central African nation, the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and Gabon. Brazza Fashion Week promotes Congolese fashion and beauty, then helps entrepreneurs who are in the shadows to show themselves to the public. The Brazza Fashion Week was the first experience of a fashion week for some designers and creators in Congo. Many relished the showcase with live music and other side attractions. Diaspora. African diaspora joined hashtag Break the Silence rally to protest U.S. neocolonialism in Africa. Hundreds of protesters gathered outside the White House in a move to protest against neocolonialism and U.S. sanctions in Africa. Break the Silence rally brought African diasporas protesting against neocolonialism and demanding Biden's administration to respect Africa's sovereignty. The protest also called out the government for ongoing racism in the country and abuse of human rights especially when it involves people of color. South Africa President Ramaphosa says current anti-foreign acts echo apartheid past. In his weekly letter to the nation, President Cyril Ramaphosa has said recent attacks on foreign nationals are acts similar to how apartheid oppressors operated, referencing events in which people from neighboring countries have been targeted, hurt and killed, notably last week in Diepslot and Goethe. Ramaphosa said such injustices cannot be allowed to happen again. He also warned against political leaders making unscientific statements about immigrants for political gain, and reminded that crime was a serious problem in the country, but was not solely the the work of foreigners and vigilantism he added was definitely not the answer in winning the war against crime and controlling migration is the responsibility of the government nigeria nigeria train attack kidnappers released new video of more hostages gunmen who carried out a major attack on a train in nigeria two weeks ago sparking outrage in the country have released a new video of the hostages at least eight people were killed and an unknown number of passengers abducted in the attack in which assailants threw explosives on trains to stop a train from the capital abuja to the northwestern city of kaduna in the video which lasts about two minutes about 20 people sit in a forested area no known group has claimed responsibility for the train attack but this latest violence has taken place in an area of northwestern Nigeria where heavily armed criminal gangs, known locally as bandits, attack, kill, and kidnap. The concern is growing over the methods used in this attack, including the use of explosives, the style of the first video, and the accent of one speaker more reminiscent of jihadist operating in the northeast of the country, hundreds of kilometers away. The governor of Kaduna state, Nasir Ahmad El Rufai, accused the jihadist of being behind the attack. Diaspora a migration museum dedicated to migrant entrepreneurs opens in London. The Migration Museum in London is opening an exhibition dedicated to migrant entrepreneurs in the UK, spanning from brands like Delivero to local business owners through various listening booths, videos, and displays. 
visitors get to understand the company's overseas origins. The museum tells stories of different black-owned businesses in the UK. Founded by Jamaican men, the company faced racism from banks that considered them as high risk in spite of their high turnover. The museum is designed to look familiar and approachable, a key criterion for the curator since the museum itself is located within a shopping center. Zimbabwe Mnangawa orders a Zimbabwean city to name a street after Kenyan president. Zimbabwe's second largest city, Bulawayo, will now name one of its streets after Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. This is according to the country's president, Emerson Mnangawa, who seeks to honor President Kenyatta ahead of his visit to the Southern African nation. President Kenyatta is expected to visit Zimbabwe on April 29th this year, where he will officiate the opening of the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair in Bulawayo. Kenyatta is also expected to plant a tree during his visit, and the city's council was ordered to provide a location for the tree. During a visit to Kenya in March, President Mnangawa invited President Kenyatta to grace the Zimbabwe International Trade Fair event which showcases prime trade in the nation as the chief guest. Africa wide, Ukraine president wants to address AU on Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine has again reached out to the African Union AU for support in his nation's war with Russia, calling his Senegalese counterpart Macky Sall to discuss the crisis. Zelensky said he provided an update to Sal, the current president of the AU, on the Ukrainian struggle against Russia and the terrible crimes of the aggressor. Sal acknowledged the call in his own social media message, noting that Zelensky, who has made numerous appeals to global leaders and legislatures, also wants the opportunity to address the AU. Their conversation touched on an AU statement issued on February 24th calling for an immediate ceasefire and a return to negotiations in order to preserve the world from the consequences of planetary conflict. The result comes amid a divided African response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. For example, 58 countries abstained from an April 7th vote in the United Nations General Assembly that suspended Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. Africa accounted for 24 of the abstaining countries, which included Senegal. Nine other African countries voted in favor of the resolution, and nine voted against. Nigeria EU looks to Nigeria for more gas supply. The European Union, EU, is mounting pressure on Nigeria to ramp up its gas supply to Europe with a visit to Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, Mr. Mele Kyari. The visit comes days after EU ambassadors paid a similar visit to the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timipre Silva, apparently in a bid to mount pressure on the country to raise its gas production. Since the Russia-Ukraine war started, Europe has sought to free itself of Russian hydrocarbons, which produces up to 40% of its total gas consumption. At the event, the federal government had urged Europe to step up investments in gas and other hydrocarbons in Nigeria to be able to help meet the EU energy demand. Ethiopia Ethiopia lifts ban on Boeing 737 MAX after 2019 crash. Ethiopia has allowed Boeing 737 MAX airplanes back on its airspace, the aviation regulator has said, three years after one of its national carrier jets crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa. All 149 passengers and eight crew members aboard the Ethiopian Airlines flight from the Ethiopian capital to Nairobi in Kenya died. The Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority, ECAA, said it lifted the ban after being satisfied with improvements in the plane's design and the airline's pilot training program. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, cleared the planes to resume flights in November 2020, but ordered mandatory pilot training and modification of flight computer. Somalia African Union stands by envoy in Somalia, Francisco Madeira. The African Union has stood by Mozambican diplomat Francisco Madeira, the head of the continental body's mission to Somalia, after he was initially expelled from the country. 
The expulsion, which has since been cancelled by President Mohamed Farmajo, was controversially issued on the 7th of April by Prime Minister Hussein Roble, who accused the diplomat of engaging in acts contrary to his position as the special representative of the AU chairperson in Somalia. Madeira was declared persona non grata and given 48 hours to leave the country. But AU Chairperson Musa Faki Mohamed reaffirmed his trust and confidence in his special representative. Algeria Italy signs deal with Algeria to increase gas imports. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi has secured a deal for more natural gas imports from across a Mediterranean pipeline from Algeria. It's the latest push by a European Union nation to reduce dependence on Russian energy following the ongoing conflict. Russia is Italy's biggest supplier of natural gas, representing 40% of total imports, followed by Algeria, which provides some 21 billion cubic meters of gas via the Trans-Mediterranean pipeline. After meeting with President Abdel Majid Tebboune, Draghi said that an agreement to intensify bilateral cooperation in the energy sector along with a deal to export more gas to Italy is significant for the strategic goal of quickly replacing Russian energy. Zambia Cabwe lead poisoning, fresh evidence filed against Anglo-American winning company on behalf of over 100,000 victims. High levels of lead have been found in the blood of thousands of children living around the Kabwe mine in Zambia, according to evidence submitted by human rights lawyers in South Gauteng High Court. The reports by medical and environmental experts will strengthen the case against British mining giant Anglo-American South Africa Limited for allegedly causing widespread lead poisoning around the site. The local population has been suffering lead poisoning for generations and it may have caused cognitive impairment in many, the document illustrated. Around 50% of children had levels greater than 45 mcg per dl and many had above 100 mcg per dl. The case was filed in a South African court because the mining company is domiciled there. Class actions are lawsuits that are filed by a group of people affected by the same problem, but Zambia doesn't have class actions and justice has been denied to the victims for over 50 years. The victims want compensation in order to access an effective medical monitoring system of the blood, lead levels, cleanup and remediation. Anglo-American has opposed the class action, passing the blame to Zambia Consolidated Copper Mines, a state-owned company that took over the operation of the mine in 1974. The claim was proven unjustifiable as it was later found out that the project was run by Anglo-American during a much longer and more active period. Kenya, Nairobi declines Ukraine request to address Kenyan parliament. Kenya has declined a request from Ukraine to address Parliament as Nairobi officials feared being dragged into a conflict with the potential to hurt its bilateral ties with both Kyiv and Moscow. The details emerged as Kenyan diplomats in Nairobi argued they have been doing enough already through the UN Security Council. Ukraine, which has been defending territory against Russia, made the request to address the Kenyan bicameral house in February when Moscow launched what is called a military operation in the country. South Africa country suffers deadliest floods in decades. The death toll from devastating floods in and around the South African port city of Durban has risen to 306, the government has said, after roads and hillsides were washed away as homes collapsed. The heaviest rains in 60 years pummeled Durban's municipality at the Queenie in Zulu. The storm is the deadliest on record in South Africa as shipping activities at South Africa's busiest port, Port of Durban, have also been suspended. The Port of Durban is said to be the largest shipping terminal in Africa as its strategic location along international shipping routes has made the port more relevant, becoming South Africa's main cargo and container port. According to reports, communications have also been disrupted. Two major telecoms companies have reported more than 900 of their mobile phone towers were down. President Cyril Ramaphosa has cut short a trip to Mozambique to visit affected areas to assess the damage. Horn of Africa U.S. Special Envoy for Horn of Africa reportedly stepping down 
U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, David Satterfield, will step down from his role before June 2022. Sources familiar with the matter have announced, after less than six months on the job, the Deputy Special Envoy Peyton North will take over the post in an acting capacity, sources said, adding that Satterfield's departure was not imminent. Earlier, the U.S. State Department announced Satterfield and North were set to arrive in Ethiopia for meetings with Ethiopian government officials, representatives of humanitarian organizations, and diplomatic partners. More than a year-long conflict in Ethiopia has sparked accusations of U.S. interference while Sudan is in economic and political turmoil following the coup. The frequent change of personnel has also raised questions about the Biden administration's commitment to the region, particularly at a time when it has authorized foreign policy crises elsewhere, primarily the Russian-Ukraine war. Kenya Kenya deports corrupt Frenchman energy CEO Jean Christian for economic terrorism. Kenyan authorities have reportedly deported Ruby's Kenya Managing Director and CEO Jean Christian Bergeron to France. The government is said to have cancelled with immediate effect Bergeron's work permit and ordered his deportation from Kenya. Bergeron is accused of economic sabotage due to the ongoing fuel crisis in the country that has seen the prices of the commodity increase, with Kenyans spending hours in queues at gas stations in search of fuel. Following a meeting with President Kenyatta, Energy Cabinet Secretary Dr. Monica Juma recommended sanctions against oil marketing companies accused of hoarding fuel, leading to a shortage across the country. The move comes a day after the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority EPRA, noted that some oil marketers were selling fuel meant for the Kenyan market outside the country. Four fuel marketing companies are set to face punitive measures from the government, including reducing the capacity of fuel that they import into the country. To avert such a fuel crisis in the future, the government also plans to boost the capacity of national oil to ensure it has a bigger role in the fuel retail business. Congo and Rwanda Congo Rwanda signed Agricultural Land Consensus Agreement the Republic of Congo and Rwanda have signed two memorandums of understanding and a consensus agreement in the agricultural field. The agreements were part of a series signed during the just-concluded three-day state visit of the Rwandan President Paul Kagame to Brazzaville. Congo will reportedly grant Rwanda 12,000 hectares of exploitable land in at least three departments of the south of the country. However, the duration of the consensus has not been specified. Congo has 10 to 12 billion hectares of arable land, of which less than 5% is used for food crops. The agriculture Agricultural deal is part of eight agreements signed for the widening and deepening of cooperation, according to a statement issued in Brazzaville. Other agreements cover investments, protection, mining management of economic entities, and the strengthening of cultural ties. Rwanda and Congo enjoy cordial bilateral relations. The growth of bilateral ties is evidenced by 2021 agreement to remove double taxation and visa requirements to ease trade between both countries. They also signed agreements regarding military education and land management at the time. Ghana. Ghana's inflation rockets to highest in a decade. The rate of inflation in Ghana has risen to its highest in almost a decade, with food prices increasing by around a fifth. The government say the inflation rate went up from more than 15% in February to 19.4% in March, far exceeding the central bank's target of between 6% and 10%. The bank raised interest rates last month in an effort to curb rampant price rises, which analysts say threatens to plunge one of West Africa's largest economy into crisis. The government has also announced a package of spending cuts to try to reduce its budget deficit and proper up the local currency. About three weeks ago, the government announced a reduction of salaries of appointees by between 20% and 30%. Africa wide. Humanitarians prioritize generous aid to Ukraine at the expense of Africans. International relief agencies may be prioritizing aid in Ukraine and in the process diverting attention and finances from equally urgent humanitarian emergencies in Africa, the Middle East and elsewhere, according to the World Refugee Council. The Ukraine refugee crisis has generated an extraordinary response in compassion and aid in comparison to previous or current humanitarian crises. The UN estimates 274 million people worldwide will need humanitarian aid this year, up from a record of 235 million in 2021. The UN's World Food Programme, which had already cut back rations because of funding shortfalls, warned in late March that the crisis involving major grain producers Ukraine and Russia would trigger the worst global food crisis since World War II. South Africa. SA accuses Ukraine envoy of being undiplomatic. 
South Africa has accused the Ukrainian ambassador to the country of using undiplomatic ways to seek an audience with the president Cyril Ramaphosa over the ongoing Russian-Ukraine conflict of the Eastern Europe country. Ambassador Lubov Abravitova says she was forced to use Twitter to request a meeting with the president. She accused the South African authorities of ignoring her numerous requests to meet Mr. Ramaphosa and other ministers. Clayson Monyela, a senior official of the South African Foreign Ministry, however denied the envoy's claims, saying she had already held meetings with several government officials. South Africa has faced criticism in its neutral stance on Russia-Ukraine conflict. Last week, the country abstained from a UN General Assembly vote that sought to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. Rwanda Rwanda asylum seekers UK government criticized of a cruel plan. Plans to send some asylum seekers who arrive in the UK on small boats to live in Rwanda have been described as absolutely chilling and cruel and nasty by charities and politicians. The government has faced fierce criticism for the policy with questions raised over cost and impact. The scheme is one of a number of measures announced to refugees seeking asylum in the UK, with others including plans to hand operational control of the channel to the Navy and asylum seekers who are resettled in the UK being spread more evenly across authorities. The scheme has been met with criticism from many quarters, including the chief executive of the Refugee Council, saying the charity was appalled by the government's cruel and nasty decision that would do little to deter people from coming to the UK. This situation clearly shows the UK has no problem with Ukrainian refugees, only African and Middle Eastern asylum seekers. Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast Prime Minister and Government resign. Ivorian Prime Minister Patrick Achi has tabled his resignation and that of his government as President Alassane Ouattara plans to slim down the size of the cabinet. At the cabinet meeting, the Prime Minister said his decision to resign followed the President's intention to reshuffle the government. Achi, 66, was appointed Prime Minister in March last year. He was the third Prime Minister in the West African state in the last three years after Amadou Gon Koulibaly and Hamed Bakayoko, who both died in 2020. Diaspora Rwanda's President Kagame in Jamaica to strengthen bilateral ties Rwanda's President Paul Kagame is in Jamaica for a three-day state visit, which, according to Jamaican local media, is aimed at strengthening bilateral ties between both countries. This is Kagame's first official visit to the Caribbean island. The Jamaica Information Service announced that President Kagame will be received at the Norman Manley International Airport to a 21-gun salute before holding meetings with Governor-General of Jamaica, Sir Patrick Allen, Prime Minister Andrew Holness, and other government officials, including Foreign Affairs Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith. President Kagame's visit comes during the year of Jamaica's 60th anniversary of independence. The Prime Minister's statement noted that the visit will also help to reinforce the steadily burgeoning relationship between the African continent and the Caribbean member countries, CARICOM region. Great news! Tunacheki, Kunda Kids and Nala have partnered together to bring you Maua and the Garden of Plenty, our first African children's book for free. Nala is a money transfer app that uses the latest technology and works with local communities to make payments as hassle-free as possible. The easy-to-use app allows anyone to quickly send money from the UK to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, with many other countries and currencies coming soon at the lowest rates available. To get a free copy of Maua and the Garden of Plenty for yourself, family or friends, download the Nala app, use the code KUNDAKIDS and make a transfer of as little as £1. For those in the USA, you can download the app and RSVP for your free book coming next month. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.